special day it is today. It is a bank holiday here right the way across the United Kingdom for Victory in Europe Day, VE Day. So at the Little Art School, we have uh, created some very special designs just for today, and we hope that you love them. So let's get drawing. So we're going to do this lovely um, VE Day for Victory in Europe Day for, to celebrate the 75 years this year. And we've got lots of straight lines in. I can't take credit for this design. This, this is one of the logos that people have been using for VE Day. And I've just adapted it slightly so we can do it in watercolour pencils. But if you have a look, we've got quite a lot of straight lines here in this. And in the strawberries you did yesterday and the minions the day before, lots of curves in there. But we've got lots of straight lines here today. So I want to just practice drawing some straight lines. Now, I've talked about this in the past before, but when you're drawing a straight line, if you hold the pencil tightly at the bottom and draw like that, you never get a great straight line. So it's about holding the pencil straight and flat, really, really, really lightly pressing and keeping, rather than curving, because your wrist has got a curve, you want to keep that really quite solid. I'm keeping it relaxed, but straight to get my straight lines. And I used to practice these every morning for five minutes. Like other people might do yoga poses. I practice straight lines. And every time anyone says to me, I can't draw a straight line, I just think, mm, but have you practiced? So straight lines are all about practice and pencil grip. Right, let's get on with our lovely VE Day special. Right, so let's start our design by thinking about going about halfway across the page and then I'm going to draw just a very light straight line. I'm going to rub this out. It's just a guideline really for me. And then we're going to go in with our letters. Now, I'm going to go here with a E. I want these letters to be really big, really stand out. And that's that line I've drawn. That's the top of my E there. So I'm just going to go here. And I'm keeping this really nice and thick so that when we colour it in with the um, either, well, I'm going to use watercolour pencils, but you can use whatever you like. Um, I want to have... I want it to really stand out. So if you wanted to put it in your window or something today, and there we go. So I've got my E, and then I'm gonna go like this with my V, one line here, one line here, and then one in the middle there. And I always find it easier to, to draw straight lines if I turn the page slightly. So I'm just gonna turn the page, and I've got it for my V. Probably not gone quite far enough. So think about that shape in the middle, that triangle you want there. So I didn't put that in the right space there. And there's my V. So I've got a V and an E. And I'll come back later and rub all those out. I might take it slightly down just a bit further so I feel like it's level. Right, now I'm going to put in the shapes that are going to form the flag. So I'm going to go inside my E here. One, two, and then I'm going to take a little line up at a diagonal there. And with this one, I'm going to go slightly up, but not as much. And then another straight line, all these lines today, straight line down. On this one, I'm going to do it slightly differently. I'm going to come down from the top of my V, go out a little, put a dot there. And I'm just going to do a parallel line. So straight in the same, exactly the same way as my V is there. And then I'm going to take that down. And up, I'm going to take that up there and down. So that's the start of our flags. They're going to be our Union Jacks there. Now I want to put in the shapes which will form our aeroplanes. And I'll talk about those a bit in a bit. And we're going to go over here and up there. So that's the bottom. There's the top. And we want to make it slightly wider. So it's this sort of shape. So that's our first one and that's going to be our central plane here. And then coming out, if you go up to the edge of your Union Jack, come in slightly and go up and we're going to have another one here. And then again, come in slightly, go up 
and I want to think about them being about level. It's as if they're in formation, these. And I'll put our second one, third one there. So there's our three shapes here, and then a V and an E, and two shapes which will form the flag. So if you pause now, and it will show you the design, and you can start drawing. So we'll start by putting in our, the wings on our planes. There's been some discussion in our house about what sort of planes these are. Um, we think maybe they're meant to be Lancaster bombers, possibly Wellingtons. We're not sure. We don't think it's actually, it's more of a design depiction than an accurate spotter's guide to planes. I'm going to say that um, because um, my grandfather was actually flew in one of these, so I'll talk about that in a minute. But I want you to start off by by splitting it up down into into thirds. We've got two dots on either side. Take a dot right out for where you want this wing to go, and it is just a down here like that. Any aviation experts that aren't happy with my plane drawing, just remember, um, I was going to say I'm an uh, artist, not an aviator, and that is true. Although I am a former RAF officer, and I probably ought to know what these look like, but I don't. There we go. So we'll take that wing out there. So we've got one. And I want to, at the bottom, pop a little tail in here. There we go. So that's our first first plane in. It's looking a bit more plane like now, less like a long bean. And we're going to go here exactly the same on the other side. I'm just going to take two. Let's make sure that they are the same size on each side. We've got two planes there and a little tail here. I'm going to point that slightly down and the same here as well. So hoping it doesn't, oh, hoping it doesn't crash with the one next to it. That would be no good. And we'll take this one down thinner here at the tail and then a little tail there. So that's our three planes. So this is our RAF picture and I've chosen this one to do for the RAF because I was thinking about um, have, representing different parts of the victory in Europe. So this is an RAF one and the senior one, I'm hoping people do both, but the senior one is for the army and massive apologies to the Navy out there who I've not, not included. But here we go. I'm going to start now by putting in the St. George's Cross, which forms the centre of the Union Jack here. So we'll take that out and you want to just have that on both sides. So we've got one cross there, same here, coming in, just on an angle. And we'll pop another one in there. And that's the second stage. So if you pause there and we'll come on to finish it off. Now we'll finish off our two Union Jacks on either side. And what I want you to be doing is in each of these quarters, you're going to put two triangles. So there'll be lots of time. Don't worry, you can pause it and do this as slowly as you like. And they don't have to be symmetrical because we've got our flags as if they're flying. So two triangles and then a line, two lines between the two triangles. And we're not going to touch. And we're going to do that on each side here. So one, two. And we're going in there like that. Now, it's a shame today that we can't all get out having street parties. But I was hoping that if people, if people enjoyed doing this design, then it might be one way to mark the day, which is such a special day. There we go. I'm going to come across here. I'm going to do exactly the same on this side. Um, marking the end 75 years, which is such a long time since the end of the Second World War. And one of the things I was hoping that this picture might do is encourage children to chat to parents and grandparents about what their relatives might have done in the war. And on that, I actually phoned my mum. I knew what my grandparents did in the war because three out of four of them were actually in the armed, armed forces in the Navy, in the Air Force, and in the Army. Just 
carrying on with these triangles here while I chat. And um, so I found them to find out exactly what my grandparents did. And it was such a lovely chat. It was such a nice conversation to be thinking about them and the sacrifices that they made that generation in the war. So I'm going to come up here now to my planes and I'm going to put on each one of them. I'm going to put a little shape like that, two on each of the wings, which will form the propellers. So coming up like that, and then I'm just going to go a line and then a small line. I'm going to do that on each of them. So maybe that's one of the things you could do today. You could phone relatives and, and find out what people in your family might have done during the war. It's so interesting to think about it. And I know that my granddad, Topping, he was here, right at the back of these planes here, which if it was a Wellington bomber, he was a rear gunner in these but it was a particularly dangerous job as they were going over bombing germany and i think it got all got a bit bit dangerous and he he became ground crew so he worked with the ground crew right that is the end of our drawing so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to use my i've only got i'm only going to use three watercolor pencils a light blue a dark blue and a red so if you've got some watercolor pencils stick with me and uh, we'll do we'll we'll paint it if you've got pens stick with me anyway because you can see what colors i'm going to use and we'll we can finish off drawing and painting this together <laughs> If you've got pens or crayons, whatever, or, or um, normal colouring pencils, just colour along with me as I'm as I'm talking my way through this. But I've, I'm going to use three watercolour pencils, and I've done this on watercolour paper. And I'm going to start here with this red. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to put a little mark there at the edge of each of my little planes, and I'm going to take that one down just to the top of my flag there, and I'm going to take this one down to the corner of my E. And I'm putting a fair bit of, of marking on there. So that, the inside the pencil is the paint pigment. So what I'm really doing is just putting the paint down here at the edge. Now, if I put a little mark here at the edge of that V and one there, I'm going to take that line like that. And this, the same with this one, what I'm actually going to do is go from here just to there and from there down to there and I've got quite a bit of pigment there and now I'm going to take my brush and um, I'm going to turn it into paint so you can see we've got those marks and we just need a touch of water so here's my paintbrush a little bit of water and as I gather in the paint from there you see, I'm gathering it in. So I've got that strong red line. And I'm just going to take the, the, the paint across there like this. I'm going to do this on the other side. So it's quite nice doing this, this plane and, and thinking about my granddad. And he was, they were called tail end Charlies and they would sit in the back of the, of the airplanes and they'd be watching out for the, for the little um, German fighters and try to blow them out of the sky. So I don't know if anybody else out there is going to be watching war films tonight. We are not quite sure which one. The Great Escape is one of my personal favourites, but my childhood was full of um, watching war films because my dad loves them. So maybe 633 Squadron or the Dam Busters, as both my husband and I. Our REF fans, maybe we'll go for that. So there we go. I'm just doing the same on that side and on this side here. I'm going to just take that down to about there. I'm being quite careful with the way I'm painting here, like that. So that's 
just to get that effect. So if you've got colouring pencils, you could just do it very lightly because I want it to be quite light. Everything else is going to be quite heavy. So now I'm going to take my very dark blue here. I'm going to have to be really careful. If I touch that red, it'll all, oh, it will all go into it. I'm going to have to um, get my pencil sharpener there. Here we go. Um, quickly sharpen and start again. You can see, you can always tell, we, we just do this in one take. Um, Elizabeth and I, I think we're on about our 65th lesson with this, not 75th, it should be really, shouldn't it, for the 75th anniversary of BE Day. And I'm just going to really put the pigment in there, I'm going to go quite hard to put the pigment in on that one. I want the V and the E to really stand out and I'm hoping by the end of the lesson everybody out there will know what the VE stands for if you're hearing everybody talk about it it's victory in Europe 75 years ago today with the end of the war there we go. And my the granddad I'm saying who was flew in these the back of these his um my grandma his wife she was also in the forces and she was a wren which meant a, a woman in the royal navy and she served in northern ireland here we go helping the navy out there so i wonder i'm really hoping you guys can Go off and find some stories, some real life stories about real people from that amazing generation. I know we all were watching Captain Tom thinking how magnificent he was. And there was an entire generation that really served their country. So there, as soon as I've turned it to paint, can you see? There's so much pigment down on there. You can really see the difference between what I'm doing here and what I'm doing in the red above where it was very, very light. This is really quite dark there. So not too much water. I'm just going right in and changing. That pigment on the paper into paint. Okay, now I'm gonna go and put in the red parts of our Union Jack now. I'm gonna go in quite solidly here. So it's a very red, white and blue painting this one. I'll colour in the centre here of the cross. And then these lines here, I'm only going to bring them to about halfway. Each of these. Not halfway, but not right to the end. I don't want them touching. And then I'll probably take my small brush here, a little bit of water, and again, can you see how from the colouring in, it turns really quickly to paint. So these pencils which look so ordinary are, are very, these, they're, they've got the paint pigment inside them, they're the watercolour pencils and we sell them on our online shop because we've had so many people asking for them. So we set up an online shop where we sell other things, we sell the paper, sketchbooks, but the watercolour pencils have been very, very popular. So you can visit the shop, it's just on our website, Little Art School, and um, and you can purchase our pencils if you fancy having a go at some of these. And all you do is you put the pigment on the paper. I'm not even colouring particularly carefully. And then a bit of water and that will change it. And it's my brush that I'm going to be careful with. There we go. The ones at the side, those diagonals, don't really need to be turned to paint. You can just put in a solid mark like that. And that's where they come into their own because you can use them just like that as well. So to finish this, these flags off, I'm just going to come in and I'm going to do my blue triangles. Here like that. We just want them all over. There. And although the war ended 75 years ago today, I was just talking to my mum because her dad was in the army during the war and I talk, I'll talk about him a bit in the other one because we've got an army soldier in the other one, but the soldiers didn't come back straight away and the airmen and the sailors, they were often away for a, quite a long time after the war. 
It was such a huge sacrifice. When we think how lonely we've, and how much we've been missing our friends and our relatives, not seeing them for a few weeks, and quite often they wouldn't see each other for years. My grandma and granddad were married at the start of the war. And then they didn't see each other again for over four years. Can you imagine that? I'm just gonna take all these and turn them to blue. So whilst we're going through this lockdown, thinking about that generation today, is fabulous because they can remind us that even the worst things end. Just change these very quickly. Now, you could do all this with a paint palette. And I thought about doing it with a paint palette, but actually it would be harder. It is easier to, to, um, to use the pencils because you can just get that accuracy here. There we go. And I'm just gonna pause for a second. And um, then when this is dry, I'm gonna come back and finish my... Right, and we can finish this off now. This is all pretty much dry. So I'm gonna come in and finish with my three planes. I am gonna do them just with a dark blue, which I'm in my head now saying is like a, it's like a Prussian blue, an Air Force blue. But if you'd like, if you're interested in planes and things, there's a few boys I know and girls who I know come to the art school, more than Montgomery being one of them, who were, who might enjoy doing this in the correct colours, maybe. You could do yours as camo ones. Here we go. I'm just going to colour it lightly. Put a bit more pigment down in the centre. And then I'm going to take that up. And I'm not going to do all three because it, they're all exactly the same. I'll just do two and then um, you can see how I've done these. If you wanted to do them in sort of camouflage colours, you could just use greens, browns, um, create a design or a pattern on them. It's yours. So you'd make it into whatever you like. And I'm going to just pretty much leave it there. Oh, and I really hope that you all have a fabulous bank holiday and enjoy your VE Day paintings. I uh, hope you really enjoyed doing those. And you can take that theme and create something really special. You could Google VE Day and look at different images and spend the weekend uh, doing different pictures. Uh, we really, really, really want to see your design. So make sure that you send them to us either on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. We would love to see what you've been doing. So hope you all have an amazing weekend, a, VE, a wonderful VE day, and we will see you on Monday when we've got a gorgeous goldfish picture. Mm -hmm.